no one can discern your human ability let's see if that's true look at verse 9 however it is written it says no eye have seen no air has ever heard no mind has ever conceived what God has prepared for those who love him that just cancel all of your professors all of your counselors including your parents and your cousin God says look nobody knows the secret I have about you and then he says they cannot even discern it you better get this see when you study this chapter it sets you free from other people's opinions eyes have not seen Ears have not heard, nor has it entered the mind of any man what God has planned for you. Isn't that good news? You should give the Lord a hand. That sets you free from people measuring you. That means if you failed last year, that, if that wasn't you, the rest of you ain't come out yet. Can I hear an amen? If you lost something, the business fell apart. That ain't you. That was just a piece of you. They should see what's going to happen in 2008. It's going to shock them. Because no man has ever conceived what God has in store for you. See, this stuff will set you free from people. Can I hear an amen? But now here's the big one. Since nobody knows it, and only God has it, the information, then the next statement is important. Underline it in your Bible. It says, but God has revealed it, the information, to us by his capital S, Spirit. Whenever you see Spirit beginning with a capital S, it's not referring to the human spirit. It's referring to the Holy Spirit of God. Now notice, the, the information, the elders don't know it, the authorities don't know it, your friends don't know it, your parents don't know it, none of your culture know it, society doesn't know it, nobody knows it, but there's only one person that knows it. What's even more important is, the person who knows it wants you to know it. God doesn't want the secret about you to remain a secret. That's the joy. And the only person that knows it is God himself. But he wants to reveal it to you. So the key to the kingdom, this is an important point here. The key to the kingdom secret about you is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This is why the whole world needs the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, you are living another life. Without the Holy Spirit, you are busy doing things you were not born to do. Without the Holy Spirit, you are misusing energy, time, talents, and gifts. If there is one thing you embrace in this planet, it better be the Holy Spirit. Because he's the only being who knows the truth about you. Can I put it this way? Only the spirit can reveal the secret about you to you. This chapter is incredible. You remember Jesus talking to his parents one day, earthly parents. They found him in the temple. And they said, what are you doing here? Why did you do this to us? His response was, didn't you know? That's an interesting question. He was telling his mother and father, didn't you know? In other words, oh, even my parents don't know what I was born to do. Only the Spirit can reveal. Take a look at this statement. The secrets are hidden deep within God. So the key to life is how do you get down into God and get the truth about you how do you get them out oh the answer is beautiful only the spirit knows the bible says the deep secrets within the spirit of god only the spirit knows the deep things of god now ladies and gentlemen you know what amazes me is this god is already deep 
how can a deep God be deep? God deep as it is. But God also has some deep things in the deep God. I have a picture of this in my mind all the time. Here's the picture I have in my mind. I see God as this beautiful, awesome being. And inside of him is all the sea of information about you. And for you to get the information, you got to somehow find someone who, watch this now, it says, who can go into God and then dive down into the deep things of God and swim around to find the information on, on Mr. Brown and then come back to the surface, come out of God and say, here's what I found about you. I keep picturing that when I read this verse. The spirit, the Bible says, what? Searches. He goes down into God. Now remember, the secrets are where? Hidden deep in God. It says, and only the spirit can go down into the depth of God and find and searches out. I like that word. He looks for information just on that one and that one and that one. And he brings it back and he says, you want to know who you are? I'm the only one who knows. The secrets of God are incredible. Look at 1 Corinthians, look at verse, verse 10 in your Bible. It says, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? Even so, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now Paul is using an example here. He says the same way no one knows you like you. Because only you could go down into you and know the truth about you. You know exactly the truth about you and you ain't telling us the real truth about you. There's some things you know about you, you ain't going to tell us. So the spirit of the man knows what's inside of a man. Watch this now. He says the same way no one knows the deep things of God except the spirit spirit of God that means the only one who can know the thoughts of God is the one who can go down into God and get God's thoughts now underline the word thoughts please oh I wish I had two more days to talk about this this one this is so deep everybody say thoughts see it's it's giving away what secrets are the secret things which are the secret wisdom of God, is called the thoughts of God. There are some thoughts God had about you that made him create you. And when Adam sinned, he withdrew his thoughts. And so the thoughts that he had for you that made him create you are trapped in God. And only the Spirit of God can go down into the deep things of God and get the thoughts of God on you. Uh, let me just try and connect this with the scripture. Turn with me to the book of Psalm 139. Very interesting Psalm. Psalm 139. Hold that a sec. Everybody has it? Psalm 139. It's a beautiful Psalm and it's a Psalm about you. As a matter of fact, the Psalm is about man, David, talking about himself. And David in Psalm 139 makes a statement that is very appropriate right now in this particular context we're studying. David says in Psalm 139 these words, and I love this uh, verse uh, 15. Uh, let's start from verse 11. Surely the darkness will hide me, the light became night around me. Verse 38, sorry, verse 38, verse 39. Chapter 39, verse 11. Everybody has it so far? Chapter 139, verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark for you. The night will shine like the day. Verse 13, for you created my innermost beings. You knitted me together where? In my mother's womb. Praise, I praise you because I am what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are marvelous or wonderful. And I know this full well. Now look at verse 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret places. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw what? My unformed body. That's why God hates abortion. His eyes on embryos. Your eyes saw my unformed body. 
all the days of my life were ordained for me and written in your book when before any one of the days began but verse 17 blows my mind how precious to me are your thoughts I rest my case he says look you finished my life before you started it wrote the whole book on me and ended it and then you started my life and that book is filled with the thoughts about me oh if you read the last statement which I didn't read he says if I was to attempt to try to understand the thoughts it would be like trying to count the sands on the seashore in other words, what you think about me is so awesome, it's impossible for me to calculate what you think about me. Let me put another example. You work in a shoe store. You think you have a good job. And God is thinking, uh-uh. In my thoughts, you own the store. In other words, God's thoughts are always above your thoughts about you. Here you are, you're a manager. God said, manager, I see you as the president of this company. In my thoughts... You don't make burgers, you own the burger store. I'll never forget one day I was watching TV. And I was a little boy, you know, black and white TV, you know, yeah, with, with, with the uh, hanger on top. Yeah. That's how poor we were. <laughs> and I'm laying on the wooden floor watching Flipper. And I heard my mother, get her from that television. It's time to go do your homework. And I'm still there watching. And she's getting irritated. So she comes and she says to me, I'll never forget this. She said, what's wrong with you? If you don't go do your homework and get some education in your head, you'll, you'll die watching TV when you could be on it. I got up. So today I'm on TV. See, you could watch TV. But God's thought may be different. You're supposed to be on it. No man knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Can I put it this way then? The key to this whole thing is the Holy Spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Let's read that. Please underline that in your, in your Bible. We have... We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from who? God. Why did he give us the Holy Spirit? He tells us why. That we may understand what God has freely given us. Please underline that verse. He's telling us the purpose for the Holy Spirit. The purpose for the Holy Spirit is not for you to have a good dance in a meeting. Or to be slain on the ground under the anointing. I mean, that's all and wonderful. I'm not against that. But that's not why he came. It says the Holy Spirit was given to you so that you may know and understand what God had freely given to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit came to give you something free that God wanted you to have. And it's the information on you. That's why it's important for you to have a and cultivate a daily relationship with the Holy Spirit. See, we, 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 we ignore the Holy Spirit. I constantly am aware of the Holy Spirit living inside of me. Because he keeps telling me the truth about me. People call you fat. What did he say? People call you stupid. What did he say? People call you lazy. What does he say? People say you'll never make it. What does he say? Oh, you're too far gone. What did he tell you? See, if you don't listen to him, you're going to believe what they say. Very important. It says he gave you the Holy Spirit so that you could understand what God has freely given to you. Oh, I love this. The purpose for the Holy Spirit then is to reveal to us the truth about ourselves. That's the purpose for the Holy Spirit.
Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please remember you can support our work on our Patreon page and you get access to exclusive content and full videos. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so and click the notification bell to be the first to receive newer content. Please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends to be a blessing to them.